Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we got a very great guest. He is an actor, director, and writer, and his name is Brad Bradley Strait Striker. And I'm really looking forward to talking to him. He's actually starring in a horror series that's currently playing right now on Netflix. And it's called The Devil in Ohio. And I've watched some of the episodes already. The show is really good. And I'm really looking forward to talking to him about the show, about his character, and talk about all the stuff he's did, stuff he wrote, and even a cult horror classic, The Brotherhood. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room, and my interview with Bradley will be coming up very soon. This is my Guru Room, and welcome to my nightmare. Okay, um, welcome to Guru, and thanks so much for taking time out of your night and coming on the show, bud. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> so, like, the fir first thing I wanted to ask, I want to dive right in it is um how did you get to be part of this new horror series that's currently out the devil in o ohio oh it was a uh, normal process man we um as actors right you get auditions and you go and you show up and you audition and some stick some don't you know um this one was uh, no different than any of the rest i auditioned for a couple parts in it and then this one ended up coming back around. Uh, I was I was ironically shooting a movie when it was when I was auditioning. So the auditions were just like shooting and trying to just shoot it real quick and then run out kind of thing. So I had to get to work. But uh, yeah, and this one just stuck. It worked out. And then I got to uh, I think it was last fall we shot September through basically into dis December, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. Just normal, though, audition process. This one wasn't too... Sometimes the audition process can get very uh, labor-intensive. They can keep coming back and doing it. This one was just a couple different parts. They called back and said we were like him for one, and the next thing you know, I was the sheriff. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for for anyone who hasn't seen, seen the series yet, can you tell us a little bit about the sheriff you, you play in the little town with upside down crosses and stuff. <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, you know, what's ironic is that it's actually based on a true story. Really? It's crazy. I know most people don't know that. And they're like, what? Um, so when I first got the part that they sent me this like sort of 20 something page history on these people. And then I started to do my own research and it really um, blew my mind. Oh Cause my I God. thought it was all fiction, obviously. Oh and when I found out it was real. I was like, what? Very confused. Um, so what was cool about it is I actually had some real history to build from and also some uh, pictures of the p actual people that were in the cult. And uh, it was, you know, you also then have to figure out how to play it on TV because there's a different, these people, like the pictures of these people, I mean, if you look, ever look this up, these people are stone-faced. All you see in their face is like trauma and anger and they're very serious the kids wow. the kids are like looking at you like and you're like whoa so <laughs> you would try to when you put it into your machine you go how am i going to transfer this over you go well what are we making and you know the audience young adult audience and all that you knew we weren't going to go quite to that reality of darkness if you will um but once you've done the research and you figure out who these people are what was fun about the sheriff is the sheriff is the as far as I was concerned, was the conduit between the people that live in this community or the cult, whatever you want to call it, in the real world. Because one of the things they did back in the day, and I forget which world war it was, it was one or two, they got a government contract in real life, and they were providing corn and pork for the troops. And they oh, became, wow. the actual community became well off. They had money. So they were able to hire a lawyer and define a county line that was where they lived and only they lived so there was one sheriff and it was it was known it's touched on in the show but it was known in real life you don't drive through there unless you get caught speeding they throw you in jail for 24 hours so it was known people just went around it because there was too much too much too much work and i was like oh that's very interesting 
but he's also the bridge between the two things. So having seen these pictures and reading, read the very dark history and everything, I was like, but he's also the one that can go out in the real world yeah. and not be obvious. Yeah, exactly. Well, then you take creative liberties and you do all that kind of stuff too, so that you can try and tell a story that's entertaining and not just dark and terrifying to the point that's unwatchable, right? Um, <laughs> well, I, I kind of found one of the things I found interesting about the sheriff and I think the community in general is um, we had, we had it right. We knew the truth. So when you went out and dealt with, you know, the civilians yeah. and doing all their stuff, regular society and their beliefs and things, there was always something about them that was cute to my character because who do they think they are? They don't live in the world we live in, which is the actual truth. Exactly. So I found that to be really empowering and also quite fun to to talk to everybody as if they were um, smaller than me, which was quite fun. So, I, you know, and that's kind of the foundation I jumped off of, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. That's I I had no idea that was based on a, a true story. Like, you, you know, like these little towns are 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 out there all over the world like these little towns that you don't want to go anywhere near because you don't know what's going on there (laughs) that towns like that are real and then with cults and everything and yeah and it's a i think more than anything else it was like um you know if you're playing somebody that was from the community your job is to not judge them and they did some really dark stuff so your job is to justify it and take on the idea of the beliefs and go, oh, got it. So we believe in this the same way anybody believes in any religion or spirituality or whatever it is. You know, it could be our it's our holy grail. And so then the way we kind of approach the world is when you see people that don't believe in that. Mm-hmm. You uh, you know, you have the right answers. <laughs> <clears throat> Which is very weird to say because it was such a dark answer, right? Well, 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 yeah. Like, like I, I remember like early on in in the the season when your character when he first goes in 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 into his like little little minivan home, and you see the cross turn upside down. So you're like, oh, okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> but, I mean, that existed in real life too. That was what they were known for. Yeah. Um, you know, and they did some dark things with those upside down crosses. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the it's 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 even as simple as that, right? In the episode where the young woman who escaped the cult turns it, you see go away from her, and then you go back to her. She's in that possible adoption house or whatever, mm-hmm. and she gets turned it upside down. Yes, yeah. She didn't do it to be spiteful. She did it because that's the right way. Well, yeah, that's the way she was raised. Yeah, she was fixing the problem. I. I, I and then anyone who uh, carves a pentagram in her back is like <laughs> dark, right? Yeah, dark, exactly. dark things, dark stuff. Um, <laughs> and, you know, all the different factions within the cult and community itself were based in truth. Oh. Again, like the women in purple robes held uh, were very high significance in the world in that community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things I figured out about the sheriff is he fancied himself second in command to only Malachi. Yeah. The only person in the planet above him, besides, you know, of course, Satan, was Malachi. Yeah. And the actual way that these people evolved from living on the Northeast, and then I think they went down to, like, the Virginias, found, got some land for nothing, tried to farm the land and couldn't because it wasn't farmable land. The There was a brother running the community at that point. His brother then killed him in front of the entire community with a shovel and told everybody he had talked. This is a true story. Told everybody that he had talked to um, Satan in his dreams and he found the light and he knew what they should do. And he, everybody should follow him to Ohio, which they did. And when they did, he was right. And when they got to Ohio, Ohio, they found this wonderful land to farm and then turned everything around. And so everybody was like, wow, this must be true. Um, but really what I'm getting at when I tell the story is it's all trauma-based. Yeah. So 
Um, it's easy to dig in and go, well, why would these people believe this? Because it all comes out of trauma. It's the same thing when you play a dark character, like a serial killer or something. And you're, like the first job order of business on some level is to, well, how did they become this person and to justify their actions? Because they believe it's the right thing. Well, well yeah, uh, of course. And I, one of the darker things I figured out is that those people are often think they're helping people out, you know? And I was like, oh my God, how dark is that? Right. I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, uh, so long answer to that question, but yeah. Nice. So was was this film in o- Ohio or was it filmed somewhere? Vancouver, BC, in Canada. Oh, okay, nice, nice. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's been a lot of stuff being being filmed there now. Well, the math is easy, right? You get a tax incentive. And their dollar is generally hovers between 70 and 78 cents on our dollar. So if you take a million bucks up there, you actually have like million two now, and you're going to get back 27% of that. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's a, it's a game of, it's a business, right? So like in the U S now there's other markets that are, you know, like Atlanta blew up because they have a huge tax incentive. Uh, Oklahoma is now has 40%, I think. Louisiana's is 40%. They're just trying to get people to come. The only difference between all these sort of other sort of people trying to pop up is Vancouver, Toronto, New York, Atlanta on some level. They've all been around for long enough to have the infrastructure built. So they have the crews and everything built there. Um, and in Oklahoma, they don't. So when you go to Oklahoma, there's not a lot of crew. You got to bring your own. And then that means you're flying and driving people and putting them up and you go to vancouver and there's i mean i don't know how many crews there is but a lot there's a lot of crews yeah oh wow okay infrastructure is built that's why we do some that's why everybody does so much up there it's good business yeah because i i was was wondering that like whenever i talk to someone like they're they're always talking about how they have to fly to canada or drive over there to film and and then even when you watch like certain series and and it says filmed in canada yeah oh yeah and it's i mean it's a lovely place don't get me wrong i mean i love vancouver it's a beautiful place toronto is a beautiful place i've never been to montreal it's everybody's favorite but oh um, really I mean, they're just good people they're good people they mean well and they're not you have to think of it this way right we have 336 million people in the u.s yeah. they have 30 they have 36 million so we were 300 million more than that. And they have more oh land. Than that. Yeah. So one of the things you discover about Canadians is that they're not, they're not willing to push people in front of a moving car as quickly as an American. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, yeah, they have more of a, a conversation. Point there. <laughs> they're kind of people on some level, which is, uh, don't get me wrong. I used to live in New York and I love New York because I think the people there are actually nice. They just tell you straight away what's going on. <laughs> they don't move around the bush. And I actually really enjoyed that, right? Um, but they could use a little bit more of that in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to go over here and visit. I don't know why I haven't yet, because I, I always heard like so many good good things about it. And and be, before we came on the interview, I mean, you were talking about wrestling. And one of my favorite wrestlers is Brett. Brett the Hitman Hart and yep. Chris Chris Jericho, who are both from Canada. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, right? Yeah. It's not yeah. that far away. It's America's little brother. It's okay. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and how how was working with with the cast like? Oh, it's, it was it's good. It was really good. Just good human beings, good people. All shows are different, all movies are different, everything is. You know, there's a there's a top down effect that happens. And um, Dario, our showrunner, was fantastic, and so were the producers and the directors were great. So good people at the top. The people at the top of the cast sheet were very nice people, very good at their job. So easy to go to work. Sometimes you go and there's a lot of drama at the top, and you're like, Oof. <laughs> you just want to get your job done and go home because you're like, I don't want to be part of any of this. That's I really like what I do, so I'm not interested in that part. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, no, no one, no one should go to work and put up with someone who thinks they're better than everybody, right? Sure, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Yeah. And was there any any scene 
you like the most or you like filming the most like my my favorite scene of the show is actually when the shrink brings brings the girl home and you think and the family thinks she's gonna say grace and she says the the devil prayer it's amazing right <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i love it um you know i don't know i i i enjoyed i enjoyed pretty much any time my character was toe-to-toe with one of the uh <laughs> one of the civilians so even in the second episode where i get to talk with the uh with gerardo the, the officer the detective yeah. um really enjoyed it because he's doing his job but the entire time he's doing his job there's something about um the power he thinks he has which i found charming and it's this uh it was just this it was without having to do anything i was in my opinion i was in my character's head, yeah, always in charge. Okay, I was never in, in like you know I toy with him a little bit, that kind of thing. Whenever my whenever my characters get to manipulate another character, I love it. <laughs> it's so fun to do. Do you know what I mean? Nice. Yes. So fun to do. It just is. It's just fun because in real life we try not to do that, right? <laughs> Walk around the world manipulating people. You know, I have a lot of friends that way. But when you step in front of the camera, that's the most fun thing to do. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I always ask guests this when I have them on. Was there any like cool or funny behind the scenes stories that happened while you were filming? Um, I mean, the, the, the story I remembered the most is the, in Vancouver because of where you're filming. Mm-hmm. September, there was a day when it was so hot, I thought people were going to pass out. Conversely, on the end, in December, there was a day that was so cold, I thought people were going to fall over. Pretty sure it was going to start to snow. And I think one night it did. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. So the, and I, I know this about shooting in the fall up there. The change is so significant. And you're like, you know, one day you're like, I might pass out from heat stroke. And then like two and a half months later, you're like, can I wear four pairs of thermals underneath my costume? And I'm pretty sure it's about to snow. Can we get this wrapped up? So that's one of the things I remember the most is the weather just being, having those unforgiving moments. Okay. Yeah. They, they, the production, they treated us all really good. They nice. did really good. There was a lot of comfort and there was a lot of, um, yeah, they were just respectful of our time even. The productions can't or aren't or don't do that. And they leave you just kind of in the lurch waiting. And, you know, these people, when they brought you and they put you to work and they let you go. Oh, wow. They really, okay. really respect it. Yeah. And like the very first film I saw, like you, you, you ever wrote and die directed was Land of the Smiles. And what inspired you to write, write to to write that? Land of Smiles was, was very simple. It was that I, uh, <clears throat> when I was thirty and then turning thirty one, I went on a two month trip to Thailand. I'm not oh, sure nice. if you've ever been to Thailand, and it's stunning and beautiful. Another place I want to go to. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely. There was a day when I woke up, I was staying in like a beach hut on an island, Jeez. opened up my doors, and I looked at this well, the beach. It was one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in my life. And I was paying eleven dollars a night. And I was like, this is heaven. And I was when I was there, I was like, I could write anybody doing anything right here in front of me. And I'd watch it. Anything. And went back home, started writing. At that point, I just written one movie. And then when I went back home, I decided I was really gonna write started writing like crazy and tried to write four movies for Thailand. None of them worked. No, the the three, none of them worked. The fourth one was Land of Smiles. And I was living in New York at the time. My, uh, my wife and I sat down and talked about it. I was like, we should do this. This is a great idea. It's going to be fun. And so we just decided to do it. We shot in New York. Well, we put it all together, cast it, found everybody, raised money, shot New York for six days, I think. Then put everybody on a plane and went to Thailand and had an adventure. And it was, amazing it was oh my a, god it sounds so much fun absolutely amazing and it was just it was nuts what we did was crazy and fun and exciting and um i've always just been kind of a person that goes i don't i don't sit and wait or what's the traditional path or what's this whatever and it's like i'm just gonna figure it out on my own and it uh it it works for me and against me sometimes you lose some money sometimes you lose some time yeah, you always get to uh, be involved in you know forward momentum. Nice, 
yeah. Like Thailand's another place, like just like Canada is a, is a place that I really Thai Thailand a little bit more than Canada because I I heard it's it's beautiful there and, and everything is so nice and I I remember interviewing someone else and it it, it it was a horror movie and she said that the horror movie was shot there and they stood out there for like for like a month and they loved it so yeah I always hear so many good things about it so it's a beautiful place it can get very hot but it's I mean I'm a huge fan huge fan. Had a great time. Very happy with the movie. Made it, you know, it was insane how we made that movie, but we did it. And, uh, you know, subsequently I've made three now. Um, I'm moving into my fourth and nice. each one becomes a bigger budget, bigger actors. And just, just about keeping moving forward. Keep it going. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I saw you were, you guest starred on on two horror shows, the Mo- Motherland Fort Salem and Van Van Helsing. So how how was it like being on set for them? It was great, playing fun characters. Um, Motherland was, was supposed to be something that in the end it didn't end up sort of becoming because it was supposed to be the end of one season, moving into the next, <clears throat> and they reformulated it. And so I just did that thing at the end of the season. Um, I was more excited about what was coming, but that's life. Um, and then uh, Van Helsing was a blast. I got to work with so many of my friends. With my friend, my buddy, good friend was directing. I got to act with some good buddies, and we just had a blast playing really awful characters like Harvey. <laughs> just so fun. In the, you know, the yellow teeth in my overall yes. whole thing. I had so much fun, dude. I always do that, right? Because I'm like, well, if I'm going to come in and do this, like, let's have a good time. And we just had a great time, so. I have no, nothing but positive uh, memories from that. Nice, man. Nice. And um, I saw like a, another horror film that you were part of. Like you actually got to work with the one, one of the, one of the horror queens, Lynn, Lynn Shay, and in the horror movie, Get, Get Gone. So how was it like being, being around her? So she's great. She's great. She's lovely. The show's tough. Um, that show was tough because first time filmmaker, small town in Oregon, which is where I was born. I love Oregon. I have a strong oh, affinity. Nice. But um, she's a lovely human. Everybody showed up, did their best. There were some problems with the production side of everything, but we had a good time. We were in a beautiful place. I got to hang out with some nice people. Um, I was, I liked the experience more than the outcome. I don't think the film actually didn't turn out very well, but um, the experience was great. Good people. Oh, okay. yeah, she's a lovely person, by the way. Yeah, she she seems like really, really, really sweet because I I seen her doing like all, all other stuff like outside of her, like when she just talks and does interviews and stuff. And yeah. she seems like like a really sweet, sweet person. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Nice. And was was your your very first like starring role film the horror film the bro- brotherhood was that was that your like first starts yeah that's a, well, it's a role? the first movie i did and, and uh those are those movies are hard because they have no money we shot very fast and we shot it i think it was in my early 20s um we shot the entire movie in four days four days you shot that movie wow that's fast so my it was trial by fire i didn't know i was like is this what filmmaking is you do 20 something pages a day um by the way it's not (laughs) it's not what it is but uh that was an interesting experience and i you know i i really enjoyed the director i thought he was a good guy and he was giving people that hadn't done much a chance Mm-hmm. So we became friendly and I met some good, some buddies from it. So again, good experience. I had a good time doing it. Um, certain people love that movie. It has a following still, um, yes. but the way we did it was insane. Totally bonkers. So, you know, again, every, everyone is just another little piece of this giant puzzle and just learning and growing and figuring it out and enjoying the process and trying to stay positive, you know, <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, I mean, you're 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 right when you said that. Like the the bro- brotherhood films have like a cult following in like in like the horror world, and and especially the first one because the first one started them all. And um, was there any scene that st- stood out to you the most? Like, I, I mean, I know that was like a while back, like your first like role, starring role. <laughs> I mean, it'd be the same story. It'd be when I was manipulating the main character, Sam. It's the same thing. I remember there was a scene when me and my guys, he come, we go up and talk to him and he's looking at my necklace. And again, if he's very intrigued and he doesn't know what's going on and I just get to look at him and I have all the answers. Um, so I guess starting from the very beginning, I've been doing that. Okay. maybe i have a very distrustful face what are you gonna do but yeah so yeah that was a, that would have been the scene i remember okay here you go <laughs> and by being someone who's worked both behind the camera and in front of the camera do you pre prefer one over over the other it's a tough question. No, I really love them both. Um, the hardest is writing because you're alone. Uh, I do a lot of it, but I really like directing and probably the most because I get to be with people. But I really like acting too. The, the hard part about acting is all the downtime waiting to work. Whereas directing, you're just the whole time you're busy. Yeah. So there's something about that that I really like. Well, well, yeah, because like you're, you, you, brought in a cast so you have to tell everybody God, what to do and- he's got questions and they need to know what's next and how about this he's got a boom 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 so that part i love nice nice a lot yeah. <laughs> and what do you like doing during your free free time when you're not involved with with doing film well i have a six-year-old so that's basically it, whatever he wants to do. And I love being a dad. I love the little guy. Um, so we do a lot of, uh, we live in Southern California. We live in Venice Beach. Oh, nice. So we're at the beach a lot. Um, riding bikes a lot, boogie boarding a lot, taking him to his sports, you know, learning new things, watching the world unfold from, you know, these brand new experiences, which I love. Personally, I really like to snowboard. Um I think more than anything else, one of my favorite sort of things, which is probably not even fair to say, but we have an 81 Volkswagen van. Okay. You know, old pop top of green, baby blue green one. I love to get in that and just go. Nice. One of my favorite things to do and go camping. Like I'm a very, very big camper. I love it. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that camping. That's one of my best things to do. Oh, yeah. I'm a big, big fan. And the whole family is my wife is and so is my son. So it's, it works out well for all of us. That's that's really awesome because some sometimes like young kids don't really like like doing that camping because you know they they can't be on their phones or anything and we make it fun for them. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, we got it. Yeah, we got them hooked. <laughs> so you know, I I have to ask is I live in in Venice Beach. Did you ever? come across hulk 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 hogan that's where he lives <laughs> uh, uh i don't think they have I, I used to work out at venice golds which is like where all the a lot of celebrities work out there yeah it's just a southern california thing though like i i've lived here off and on for 15 years and you see people all the time everywhere it's just the nature of how it is and, and also spending three and a half years in new york on top of that okay people okay. all the time like oh yeah oh yeah like, it just becomes something you don't notice as much. Um, but I'll, I'll keep my eye for the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, what songs do you like? Like, who's who's on your your playlist? Oh, um, we have a record player. I love old oh, records. Nice. So my favorite thing to listen to is old jazz. Yes, I just love jazz. There's something about jazz and about how it flows and finds its rhythm, finds its way, um, and the level of talent it takes to do it well. 
It's my jam. I love it. And I also love old, I love old rock. I love like, I just like older music. Yeah. And, and, and you know, my wife is a bit younger than me. And so she, she introduces me to music, you know, what's happening now, which I enjoy. But when I get home and turn on music, I grab an old jazz CD or classical CD or some classic rock and I throw it on a record player. Oh man, that sounds that sounds really cool. Nice. <laughs> and if you were doing karaoke, what would be your song to sing? Oh, I think last time we did it, we sang Bon Jovi. I think. Nice. Yeah. Ridiculous. Something that takes a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. Generally, be what I would say. <laughs> and and plus, you know, you, you want to pick a song that the the people sitting sitting down at the bar or restaurant or are going to want to sing along to so it gets like the vibe going yep let them get into it 100 percent right <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah 100 and are you a, a a horror movie fan and if you are what are some horror films you like to watch i am um but i'm more of a horror thriller oh nice okay i was just talking to somebody about the like 10 cloverfield lane which i think is a good movie not a great movie but a good movie um you know and then i like movies like the shining and yes uh, <laughs> i'm trying to think what i've seen recently that was really good um i saw an independent film just a little while ago that i really really loved but it was a um more of a thriller um, thriller is my favorite thing and then uh, horror would come in somewhere right after that okay um, I didn't see <clears throat> was it Black Phone oh yeah yeah it looks terrifying it's really good I saw that I even interviewed like a lot of the kids from the film well they yeah that's part of the reason I haven't seen it yet because I have a six year old it's hard for me to watch movies where the kids are put in danger yeah, true. It always true. makes me kind of step back and go, oh, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. There was a movie that came out a couple of years ago that I thought was just beautifully done, which was The Witch. Oh my God, that was so good, wasn't it? Creepy. My goodness. Yes. My favorite horror films are generally always going to be the ones that are like independent films mm -hmm. where somebody did something profound. I remember, was it um, wasn't Insidious? It was the other A24 one. When the, Spoiler alert, the kid's head gets taken off at the beginning. Uh, I'm trying to think which one that was now. Uh, 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 I, I mean, there's a lot of horror movies that have <laughs> people's heads. Oh, yeah, Horror-esque was the, what was the one in the Swedish village? Not mid Midsummer, right? Oh, was it Swedish village or didn't? Yeah. I, yeah, I think so. Oh. I think Midsummer. It's, 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 again, these, are, these aren't classic horror films, mm -hmm. but they're just smart. Like, I loved Get Out because it was a smart yes. film. Um, you're going to get a lot more mileage out of me when the story is smart. Um, jump scares and, like, what I expect to happen happening. Not me. But I also don't eat fast food. So, it's like, and it's not a stance I'm making. It's just that I don't enjoy it. So, I don't need it. Okay. And, uh, anything that's kind of like fast food entertainment, I, I don't watch reality TV. Never seen an episode of the Kardashians in my life. Don't actually know what it's really. I know it's based on a family. It's absurd on some level. Not my thing. Not my thing. I, you know. I never watched that show either. I mean, I, I'll get lost in a documentary. <laughs> Love them. But then it's based on real things. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. Yeah, exactly. did, you, did you ever see, like, on, on since we're talking about hard, did you ever see the the dot the documentary that they did on pol poltergeist no no the one well, the last series documentary i did was the one about the colton oregon okay okay which i found intriguing because i'm from oregon i had no idea <laughs> <clears throat> i was like mom dad what's going on here very interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. but no i love i love good uh a good documentary especially something that wakes you up the hardest i think the scariest movies to watch now are environmental docs <laughs> okay because you're like this is actually happening we oh, hold on is this true because this, yeah. this is insane what's happening because uh, it's not fiction yeah yeah exactly so you're like oh okay so we're in trouble interesting 
I tend to listen to scientists or educated people. Like when I go to my doctor, I tend to believe what they say, not come up with my own opinion idea. That's true. That's true. You know? I mean, you can't tell today because I'm losing my voice, but either way, you know, that's kind of the way I operate. So uh, anything based in truth, that's based in a real person that's studied and put in the time. Right. I find very uh, enlightening, <laughs> unless it's, you know, some subjects are harder now than others. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and are do you do you like halloween time halloween season like do you do you go all out and decorate and get ready and costumes I love and it because i have a six-year-old and my wife loves it but i don't love it as much as either one of them <laughs> they're both insane people but i do really really love it and we have a great time um you know I think one of the things that happens when you get older is you're like, <clears throat> you know, you're working all day and then they're like, okay, let's go to do Halloween. You're like, great. When you're a kid, you plan for months. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, that, that bandwidth of time has eluded me at this point. So I enjoy the night with my family, but that's what it is. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> and do you binge watch anything? Like, are you someone who likes binge binge? binge watching like again i'm gonna get a broken record now um you can only binge watch so much when you have a kid that's true that's so true you know, the maximum amount of tv i'm ever going to get at the end of the day is two hours probably so our version of binge watching would be like four nights in a row finishing <laughs> you know and ultimately there's there's a sporting event or something that will come up in there that stops us so, you know uh, we were able to see, we we're able to see things relatively quick, but I, when people tell me they watch the whole thing in a day, I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means, nor personality wise. Could I do it? I go crazy sitting that long. Okay. <laughs> and, um, do, do you have anything coming up, up next that you want to plug if you're allowed to talk about it? Or I mean, I got a bunch of stuff coming out, um, I think the next movies that are coming out is a movie called Dangerous Game, with John Voight and Jonathan Reese Myers. <clears throat> there's a movie, I don't know what they're going to call it in the end. Um, well, there's a movie called Mercy. Again, I'm not sure what that one, that was a, another John Voight, Jonathan Reese Myers movie, ironically. Um, that one was fun. But uh, there's a movie called Disquiet, and I don't know if that's going to be the title, but I played, I had three and a half hours of makeup. <laughs> I'm unrecognizable, dude. Like I have, like, I'm going to just show you the picture. Okay. It's, it's absolutely one of the most insane jobs I've ever done because I didn't, I created a character and then when I showed up to work and they showed me what we were doing, what their idea was, I was like, note to self, I didn't see this coming. Oh my God. You get it? Yeah. That's me. Three and a half hours, bro. And so that one will be fun just because it's insane. <laughs> It's crazy. Wow. Like, we madman. Yes. Completely <laughs> out of my mind. The next film I subsequently went to do um, had a lot of the same crew on it. And they were all staring at me like, how do I know you? And I was like, I was in that last movie. I told them, they'd be like, what? And be like, the producer who I know, I've done a couple of movies with him. When I walked on the set the first time, he just stared at me. Oh my and God. And told him, like, that's Bradley. He was like, what? Was he kidding me i was like apparently we did something right here <laughs> yeah again just fun at work you know what i mean like when you sit down for three and a half hours and they assemble that that's a really good time wow so yeah. <laughs> oh my god and lastly where can fans follow you at uh my name at bradley striker b-r-a-d-l-e-y and then there's a y in striker and that's on instagram facebook um mostly active on instagram but really not that active in anything just i'm 45 so i graduated college without a computer i was the last of the last people to do that when i had to use a computer we had to go to a computer lab so yeah as technology sort of filtered into life i've embraced it on some level and then i've also um i'm also somebody that uh that can honestly look at it and understand that it might not be the best thing for us so I try to uh, do my job, let everybody know what's going on, post, you know, once a week or something like that. Uh, okay. 
but I also am very reachable on those platforms. So anybody can email me because or message me because quite honestly, like, especially post COVID, like I just miss people. So, yeah, exactly. you know, and I'm not, I'm not somebody, you know, there's be there's times when I'm busy. If I don't get back to people, it just means I'm probably shooting. But in general, I'll get back to people because uh, I'm a human being and they just have some sort of interest that aligns or something I did. And I just try and be as, as active as possible. Wow. That's, that's really, that's, that's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, it was really good talk, talking to you. Thanks so, so much again for, 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 for doing this. It was really, it was really yeah. awesome meeting you. Absolutely. My pleasure, brother. And I appreciate it. And you having me and uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're having a good time. Man. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> All right.